Hi, and welcome to this Lightwave Wave tutorial. Today I want to show you how easy it is to visualize statistical data with Lightwave if you are using the instancing and the absolute coloring technique. This approach is both fast and flexible, and once you set up the surface parameters correctly, it doesn't matter if you have to visualize data for 10 or for 100 indicators. For this tutorial, I decided that we will visualize the results of German state elections. And in our end results, this image, uh, we have our map of Germany, which I downloaded at d-maps.com, showing the boundaries of our 16 federal states. And within each state, we have a little indicator that reflects the share of votes each party received. We will start from here where I already set up the 16 indicators, but not the results of the elections. In the beginning, I want to give you a quick overview of the objects that you may need if you want to visualize statistical data. You need three things. The first one is our indicator. The second is our map. In this case, the map of Germany. And I used this layer to also set the coordinates within each state that the instance generator will use later on, paste them into a different layer, as I don't want to have the four points that make up the map to be used in our instance generator. So that's the three layers that we need. And now we can go to layout. I already opened the node editor of our indicator surface and what you can see is that we use a gradient that shows the share of votes each party received in a, in a given state. And in our starting point render we only saw these three bars ranging from 0 to 1. So the first bar starts at 0 and it goes. 2.5, meaning that the red party received 50% of votes. The next one goes to, uh, I shifted it a little bit, but it was at about 80%, meaning that the green party received 30% of votes in this given state, with the blue party having the last 20%. What we need to drive our gradient across the whole area from 0 to 1 is in our case an image. We have a, a grayscale image and the middle part of it ranging from black to white is a part that makes sure that our surface gets evenly colored with the colors of our gradient. We have a reason that we have two more areas in here. As you might recall, our indicator is about 120 degrees in size, so it's a third of a circle, and the other two thirds of a circle are driven by these two areas, which I colored in the opposite color of the gradients and to see the boundaries. As our indicator is shaped like an amphitheater, we need the colors to start in one point and therefore we used a spherical mapping using the y-axis as our objects laying on the ground floor. Next, um, as you have seen in our starting render, which I can reproduce again, every instance has the same coloring right now which is not what we want. So, as we are using instances, we should make use of the instance info node, which features the ID index, starting at zero and increasing by one for each given instance. And if we add the color of our image to the ID index and use this as input for our gradient node, we lift the results for each state by one position in our gradient. So as you can see, we set the locations in alphabetical order 
and uh, here we have Bavaria showing yellow and green the result for yellow and green parties and we have Berlin with the result of two different parties. So let's have a look at our gradient and we can see that uh, I moved it once again but it was in its original it was in position number one and here we have the yellow party ranging from one to two together with the green one. The setup is correctly but now we would need to use real values and if you ever tried to build a gradient with lots of nodes you know that it is both slow as you have to make uh, a lot of settings and it is very hard to catch the right key afterwards if you are having more than for about 30 keys or so. That's where you could use the gradient node builder plugin and in this case I will decide we want to build a gradient node. We want to have a specific color for each key so we keep this setting here. The alpha we don't need to change it because it should be always 1 or 100 percent so we can keep it at a general setting. Same is true for smoothing and the type that we need is already set. But we want to have a key name and we want to lock our keys as you might recall that I changed them quite often <laughs> when I wanted to click on them. So we already made our, the settings for our keys here. Now we can take a look at the file specific area because what, what the gradient node builder does is it gives you the choice if you want to define um, the properties of each key in a specific way, meaning that you can define them in a text file or in a character separated values file, which you can create in your favorite spreadsheet editor, or whether you want to set some general values that will be applied to all keys. Okay, so um, to separate between the different properties, we will use comma as suggested by the gradient node builder. And now we need to set up a file with the following structure. We need to set the ID, the name and the values for red, green and blue. And we will do it in a spreadsheet editor. To save some time I already set up the data. So we have the name of our state and its abbreviation. We have our party names and we have the share of votes each party received in the given state. And these values are ordered by the state and descendantly by the share of votes or scanningly by the rank. Next I used some formula to get the color values for this specific party which I set up in a different tab here. Now we have our red, green and blue values and the important thing is our position. The position is meant with the starting point where the color should start. What we have to do here is we begin with zero for our first party but then we will sum up all the positions or the share of votes of all previous parties. That's why our second party starts with 43% while our third party starts with 70%. And as you can see whenever we come to a different state we will have an integer value. Now I could remove all the formulas and arrange our columns in the way that gradient node builder expects. But I like to stay flexible. That's why I prefer to use a formula called concat, 
which concatenate all the information that we need. So we get our position, we get our name, which is a combination of the state abbreviation and the party name here, and we get our red, green and blue values. And of course we get our separator. You can see a little bit more here as uh, I'm using a German version which uses the comma um, to separate the integer from the um, fractional part of a number. But the gradient node builder needs these values to use the American symbol for separating the integer from the fractals, which is the dot. So I also use the formula here to change the comma to a dot. Next, all I have to do is to copy and paste our values into a simple text file. Then I go back to the gradient node builder and open the source file. I keep the name. I like to create a log, although this is not necessary, but it is very helpful once an error occurs. So, and now I hit OK, and in this case, our node was successfully created. So let's head back to the surface editor, and now we can import our node and replace our uh, handmade gradient with it. So we may have a look at the gradient and as you can see we have lots and lots of keys and it's getting very crowded. However, we can run through these keys with our next key and we see we have our key name, we have our color, we have the position and we have the step. We might want to correct the end value as a gradient node builder uses the um, smallest and the biggest value of all the keys that uh, it parses to define the start and the end position. So now we can do a render and we will see our final result here. If I would decide that I would like to visualize the results of uh, elections in the United States, I would only have to download the correct map, uh, set up my coordinates and build the gradient with the gradient node builder. And that's not all that you can do with the absolute coloring technique and the instancing functionality of Lightwave. You can do even more complex stuff like this one. Here we created a dashboard that is made up of 100 instances of our little pressure control here. And we used two gradients and one image file to control how it looks like. For example, we used one gradient to control the position of the needle and the lights whenever the needle is in one of the um, beginning or end positions. We used another gradient to control the, the width of our scale and we used the image file for the labels. I hope you liked it and see you next time.